So today I'm going to show you how to set up a local web server using the uh, free software XAMPP. Um, the intention of this video is to show you how to like set it up for uh, testing on just your local network. You can connect to it with some other computers locally. Um, these same steps will work to uh, make a website that's actually accessible from the outside internet as long as you have like a public IP address and the other stuff set up correctly. Um, it's just keep in mind that if you do use an, this as an actual web server like to the internet, there's a lot more security risks that you have to worry about. So make sure if you're going that way uh, to do a lot more research before you just uh, throw it online and, and go for it. Uh, but for local testing, this works great and is very easy to set up. And uh, just with this few minute video, you'll have an actual working uh, website set up on your computer essentially that you can access locally extremely easily. So first thing you're going to need to do is download this uh, software XAMPP. You can get it from apachefriends.org. It's completely open source. It's been used for 10 years at this point. Uh, and it has a lot of the stuff that you need built into it. Like it has several different softwares. It has uh, Apache, PHP support, PHP my admin for setting up uh, database stuff. So um, I'll walk you through that a bit later. But um, essentially just click the one for your uh, operating system here. I'm on Windows 10, so I'm just going to go with the Windows option. You'll see it's a pretty big file, so it's going to take a little bit to download. Luckily, I already have it downloaded, so I'll just skip to the one that I have downloaded already. Um, it's just in this folder right here. So it's just an executable you can run. And just hit yes at the security warning. And uh, the software is provided by this company, uh, Bitnami. So the first thing you're going to get usually is this uh, message right here, just warning you that if you have UAC, which is user access control, that's where it like pops up and has that window that warns you about things. Um, the, it's saying that you can either turn that off or if you want to leave it on, make sure to not install it in the program files folder, which is what I'm going to suggest because user account control is a pretty important thing to have turned on on your computer. So I would just hit OK here and I'll show you where later uh, that message is relevant. So uh, just hit next at this window. Then for what we're doing here, really the only ones you need checked are uh, PHP my admin, Perl, PHP, and then uh, Apache and MySQL. You can leave them all uh, clicked, it doesn't hurt anything. So uh, I use the FTP server myself and then uh, Webalizer is a good um, thing for web logs to to analyze, so uh, you can leave them all checked, it won't hurt anything, it just takes up a little more space. So then when you hit next here, so this is what that uh, message was warning you about. So it's saying to not change this to your program files. So if you went to your, like you wouldn't want to make a folder in program files and call it XAMPP because of the access permissions for it. So the better idea is to make, uh, like either go C XAMPP or uh, make one in your documents folder or something like that. I'm just going to leave it as this and that works fine in my experience. So you can just hit next here. And then if you uncheck this, then it won't pop up with a web page at the end. Uh, just kind of describing the developers of XAMPP. It doesn't affect anything if you leave it checked or not. So then hit next there, next again, and now it'll start installing. Uh, this is a pretty long process, so we'll skip to the end here, but uh, it won't have really any prompts until the until it finishes. So when it finishes, it'll uh, ask you if you want to start the control panel now. Uh, that's a good idea as XAMPP doesn't automatically start the services and installs, which is actually a good security feature because you really only want them on on like your local network or whatever uh, network that you're practicing this on because if you take it to say a coffee shop or something and it's still on, then other people will be able to access your web server. So uh, if you don't want that happening, this is a useful feature here. So, um, so you can just leave it checked and then hit finish. And then it'll ask you for your localization. Okay, so now with the uh, XAMPP control panel, we can actually turn on any of the services we need. So the actual only one you'll need for this uh, tutorial is the Apache one. Uh, MySQL is if you uh, want to use like WordPress in the future or something like that. That's why it was important that you install that one. But for just the generic stuff we're doing for this tutorial, you really only need Apache. So if um, I go to my web browser and I type in localhost here, uh, localhost is essentially the IP address of your computer um, without having to know what it is. Like it will automatically map it to whatever it is. So the, you can say localhost or type in 127.0.0.1 and you'll access your computer's uh, um, web server essentially. So if you were on a different computer and wanted to access this web server on your local network, you'd need to find the IP address of this computer. So to so see here, I'll just uh, click enter on localhost and it'll show up with nothing is available. So 
um, if we go back to Zamp now and we start the Apache server, you'll see it just started up, and now all of a sudden I got this web page here. So that's what Zamp is supplying us with. So um, at this point, I'll just show you a little bit about the web server itself. Um, more experienced users probably won't need this one, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to like access the actual files on the web server and update them with whatever you want, like your own HTML files or something like that. Uh, so um, essentially the important folder is you need to go to your drive where you installed ZAMP. So for example, I just did C ZAMP. If you did a different folder, you'll need to go to that one. So um, then the important folder inside here is htdocs. The rest of it is really just part of the ZAMP installation, but htdocs is what's actually showing up in your web browser here. So you'll see there's like a dashboard folder here. That's because the HTML files that show um, show up on your web browser are in that dashboard file. And it's based on this index.php right here. So essentially when you type in localhost, the first thing it does is it's gonna look in this root of the htdocs folder here and check out this index.php file. And then if we edit this, you'll see that um, it's looking for the location dashboard. So it's looking for the index.php in the dashboard folder. It's saying like that's the default it should go to. So if we go in the dashboard folder here, then you'll see another index.php file. Um, or sorry, the index.html. So that's our like basic web page layout right here. Um, I'll edit that one. And you can see that this is um, essentially the HTML file that's showing up right here. So if I were to change like, for example, this applications option right here, that's this applications button up at the top of this web page. So if I just change that to a different word, I'll just say about and then save it. If I reload the web page, you'll see that that change just showed up on the web page. So at this point, if you want to set up your own uh, like static web pages with HTML, you can essentially just load them right into uh, this folder right here, or well, in the root of the, root of the htdocs folder, or make your own folder and then have the index.php point to your HTML file. So there's a lot of tutorials out there for that. I'll show you, I'll probably do another tutorial on how to actually like set up your own static HTML page, but this is setting up the actual web server. So now you have a web server on your computer that is able to uh, serve up web pages. So that's the, the basics of what you need. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is when you're done with whatever you're doing, whatever you're testing, you should turn off the service because sometimes it can cause wonky things with your internet connections. It, it can just conflict with other things, but then also it is a slight security risk depending on what you actually have in your HTML files here, or your PHP files. So um, essentially whenever you're not working with it, you should probably stop the service and then you can close the uh, XAMPP control panel. Anytime you want to start it again, you can just uh, open up the XAMPP control panel again and just hit start and keep working. So uh, that is the basics of how to install a web server on Windows 10.